Hey you guys, in this video I'm going to be wrapping this toolbox, actually it's two toolboxes uh, stacked on top of each other, in Vivid's new indestructible vinyl wrap. Uh, I have two colors for that, it's going to be black and gray, as that way it gives a cool two-tone look. I will of course be wrapping the outside of this toolbox, but also on the inside as well. It has a large container in the bottom, multiple shelves. Uh, and I'm going to be putting the indestructible wrap also on the inside of the shelves to provide uh, some durability and um, protection to the shelving itself uh, when you put your tools and other items in there. Uh, this is just a standard stackable toolbox made of metal and so adding a this Vivid's indestructible wrap uh, will and should um, help protect it from scratches, abrasions, maybe even some very very minor dings um, but also add and give it a cool, unique, rugged look. Um, as you know, if you take care of your things, or at least in my opinion, is if you take care of your things and treat them a little bit better, they tend to last a little bit longer. And so adding a good thick layer of protection uh, on this toolbox uh, hopefully does the trick as well. It's kind of like adding a, uh, a skin to your laptop. All right, so the very first thing that I'm going to have to do, as you can see, this is quite dirty. Um, is get it cleaned up very well. So I'll just wipe it down with some good general purpose cleaner and then after that wipe it down really well with uh, isopropyl alcohol. I like to use um, a 70-30% a 70-30 mix with 70% alcohol with 30% uh, water uh, as far as the, the ratios go for that and that will eliminate or get rid of any oils, residues and other things that would prevent the bottom from sticking. Um, and so in this video, I will show you how I wrap this and, um, and then the final product. All right, guys, now that I've got this toolbox cleaned up nicely, uh, I gave it a good vacuuming, a wipe down with some actually some automotive detail sprayer, and then a good wipe down with um, isopropyl alcohol and a 70 30 mix 70% alcohol, 30% water ratio, uh, so it's nice and clean. All right, so before we get started, though, I wanted to go over a couple of tools that we would need to do this project. Uh, real basic things, so I'm going to have a heat source. I'm going to be using this heat gun here. Um, I have a couple of utility knives here. One is actually a Vivid knife as well. Um, you can see it's pretty well worn. Uh, the, the logo is out. It's one of my favorite blades, or excuse me, knife bodies to use because, uh, in my opinion, it's very well balanced. Um, and easy to use. Um, and I also have a secondary blade. I like this, or excuse me, knife. I like this body because it's a thin body, whereas this is kind of thick. And with this thin body, sometimes I can get into areas where um, I could not necessarily reach quite well uh, with the Vivid body. Uh, that's by a brand called Ulfa. Um, the blades that I like to use or prefer to use are these snap off blades. I have this kind in both knives. Um, and those are just the 30 degree snap off blades versus your standard 54 degree blades that uh, typically come with utility knives. Um, the blade brand that I'm using right now is by NT Cutter. Uh, Ulfa and NT Cutter seem to be the big uh, names as far as knife bodies and blades around. Um, I also need a tape measure so I can measure out the pieces that I need. Uh, I have a squeegee. This is just a generic squeegee but it does have magnets in it so that's kind of handy. Um, on one side I've got uh, a felt buffer. This is just by uh, Monkey Strip is the brand. And then on this side I actually have um, PTFE or Teflon tape wrapped around the hard edge of the squeegee. And what that does is on regular vinyl it makes the hard edge of the squeegee slide really easily across that vinyl when you're applying it. Other things that I have on hand that I may or may not use, uh, some micro squeegees, got an assortment there, a, a blade breaker box so I can snap off the blades as I need. I've got this body cutter knife um, to cut pieces or slits if I need to slide. I also do have a wrap glove in there um, and another squeegee, that's just a 3M gold squeegee uh, for other tools that I might need. So those are the basics that you would need for most any wrap job. Uh, but really, your squeegee and your knife, um, tape measure, and micro squeegees are the ones that I use the most on a daily basis in my, uh, in my job, my regular day job. 
All right, so with that, the next part will be starting the wrapping process. So for this part, I'm going to be putting black indestructible vinyl on the inside of the uh, shelf of this particular lid top. So you can see I pre-cut the piece. I have found that in uh, trying to put this in here, pre-cutting piece to size has made it uh, the easiest to do. So all I did was pre-cut the piece, made sure it fit, uh, cut off a piece of the backing paper there to kind of get it tacked in place. But essentially you can peel the whole thing, put it in place, uh, and then lay the vinyl out as you'll see in this part of the video. For this part of the video, I'll be doing the one of the inner shelves, putting the indestructible vinyl on the shelf flooring. You can see I did previous ones. Again, cutting this piece to size makes it super easy to do. Uh, as you can see, I just basically put it in, peel the backing paper, and lay it into the bottom of the shelf. In this portion of the video, I'm going to be putting some more of the indestructible vinyl on the bottom floor of this lower part. This is the part that's not a shelf, but it's got a uh, hinge up door, as you can see, that's placed up. Again, this one, we have to cut it to size. It's gonna be the easiest thing to do, but I do have a little bit of uh, excess going towards the front. And so what I'll do is I'll trim it because there's a part where there's a L-shape uh, section where the side wall meets the front of the uh, vinyl or the front of the um, of the shelving itself and then I have to trim out uh, the shape in between there as you can see I'm just using the side of the wall there to cut vertically down and then on the other side the side of the wall to cut vertically down and that basically allows the vinyl to fall in place and then I just trim off the front part of the um, vinyl that's overhanging outside the front and then if there's any excess on the inside you trim that out as well. In this part, we'll be showing you how to basically put the gray indestructible vinyl on the front faces of the shelving pieces itself. All you do is cut out a strip that's slightly bigger, uh, place the strip onto the um, shelf face itself, and then as you see, you just simply apply it. And then what you do after that is trim off the excess using the side of your blade against, in this case, the bottom and sides of the shelf. Trim off the excess and you'll have the faces of each of the, cell, the shelves covered with indestructible vinyl to provide that layer of protection. You basically do the same process for each of the shelves of this toolbox.
lid of the small toolbox. As you can see, I have a piece that's slightly bigger than the actual lid so I can cover the front side and the back side and then go over each side. In this case, I'm just basically going to wrap the top, front and back. Uh, I'm not going to wrap the sides quite yet. Uh, trying to wrap everything uh, down in one piece I found was going to be uh, a little bit too difficult. So I was just going to do sectional pieces here. So in this case, taking care of the top uh, and the front. So it's pretty simple. You wrap it um, and apply the top. And then you can see I'm cutting off the excess off the side there so that it can drop down. Roll it over and apply it across the front uh, and the back. Um, on the back side, there are a couple hinges that we'll have to work around, but you can see I'm applying it to the front there. Once you got that done, you can trim off the excess on the sides uh, and the front. As you can see, I'm doing the bottom trimming of the lid bottom itself uh, there. Trim that off, and then once you uh, have that trimmed off, you can get to the back side and trim off the sides as well. All right, for the back side, like I said, there were two hinges. And so basically you'll roll over the top, the, the vinyl over the top, and then you can see on the hinge pieces, there's two in the back here. I'm making a relief cut so that I can then have essentially three tabs that are easy to work with as I try to work around those hinges. I'm using my squeegee to outline the sides and edges of the hinges, and you're basically gonna cut out the, uh, cut out the hinges from the vinyl itself. Uh, so that all the pieces can lay flat and then you, you can apply it. Once you've done that, to simply just trim out the bottom edge of the, um, of the vinyl by placing your blade against the bottom edge of the lid side itself and then this piece will be done. Here you see I'm taking care of the second hinge uh, and then after that I will simply be trimming off all the excess to um, have a nice clean finish. In this part of the video, I'll be wrapping around the side faces, except for the lid sides. Um, basically the side and back faces of the main body of the small toolbox here. You see that I had a piece already big enough to wrap around, and this is essentially just wrapping uh, around the entire um, or the entire toolbox. Uh, when you make, when you come across the, the curves where it bends in 90 degrees for the side walls, whenever, where the back meets the side, Make sure that you really, really press the vinyl down on each of the corners so that there's no trapped air bubbles uh, right at the corner edges there. So you can see I've applied it generally loosely for now, working out all the air bubbles, pushing everything out. And then once I get to the corners, I'm gonna take extra care to make sure that I have it wrapped around the corners very, very tightly. Um, you can see that there are also hinge pieces that we have to worry about for this particular section as well. And so we'll address those the same way as did the top half of the hinge pieces when we are wrapping the lid piece of this part of the toolbox. You can see I'm spending a little bit of time on that corner there because I want to make sure that um, no air gets trapped when you wrap around the corner. So you have the corners on the back and the corners on the front. 
Um, once you have it wrapped around the corner, make sure you squeegee extra uh, extra well to make sure that all any air bubbles are gone. Give it some heat to see if there are any air bubbles are trapped, and then simply press it out. Or if you need to, lift the vinyl back up to then reapply it and apply everything flat so that there are no um, no bubbles. On the front sides, where the uh, sidewalls flap um, wrap over and flap to the front side, there you'll have to trace it out. You can see it's kind of rounded at the top. And then so you trace it with your squeegee and then um, basically trim around that edge there. Use your squeegee to help you and then trim it out and then trim straight down on the inner edge on the front side there. When you get to the bottom pieces uh, later on, basically it'll just put the bottom, the side of your knife against the bottom of the toolbox and use that as your guide to trim everything out. So you'll do this for the rest of the toolbox um, to trim out the front all the sides and then along the bottom uh, at the end.
once a day that I would pray for you I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too Sneaking looks up and down from across the room and Damn, what a hell of a view I feel good, you look great I like you, I can't wait Our first time, our first day You're so fine, I'm so late You sip wine, I drink straight Don't waste time to my place I feel my heart erase So catch me if I fall You'll see in this video that I elected not to try to cut those out uh, just because this, again this vinyl is so hard to trace out the lines where you want to cut um, that you'll see that basically once I've got the wrap fully installed uh, and, and placed I just added heat and really pressed in um, basically like an embossing if you will pressed the vinyl on and over those rivet areas themselves. Uh, added a lot of heat to make it soft and pliable and make sure that I got full coverage and really, really pressed that vinyl onto and around and molded onto and over and around those rivets down at the bottom. But essentially, this the process of wrapping this lower section, uh, the sides, the front flaps and the back, is the same as the small toolbox on the top side there where basically you'll want to lay the flats. Once you get to a corner, make sure that you take extra care to um, ensure that there's no air trapped as you wrap the vinyl around the corner. Uh, it likes to trap a little bit of air in there if you don't really, really press out one side, bring it around and press it out again. Uh, you'll find that there's going to be air bubbles trapped uh, on possibly either side if you're not careful about doing that. So the only difference there is really um, taking care of the rivets towards the bottom ends there by the wheel casters. Uh, but otherwise the process of wrapping this was the same as the upper toolbox, the smaller toolbox to the top as far as wrapping around. Trimming out, you know, on the front side, you got the metal flaps that form the side walls that flap over the front. 
Uh, so we have to trace those out and then trim out those particular pieces as well.
This part I'm going to be wrapping the face of the lower hinge door, the one that hinges up. Uh, there's a handle hole in there. What I did was there's a plastic handle insert that I just basically popped out first. Um, so that way I have a nice clean flat surface. And you can see me start to trace a little bit of the uh, hole itself. But this is super simple. It's just like applying to the front flap or the top side of the, um, of the toolbox. Basically lay it down flat. It's a little difficult in that this it is on a hinge and the door can move. Basically once you've got everything laid down flat, trim out the sides and the top and then trim out the hole for the handle so that you can pop the handle back in. This part of the video, I'll just be applying trim to the lower face of the toolbox. And so basically, just like on the top faces of the uh, face strips of the upper toolbox, um, what I had to do here was essentially just put a strip, find where those uh, metal flap folds over, and then trace those out and then trim it out. So uh, once I've got that done, I can trim across the top, trim across the bottom, so everything, all the excess is cut off. And then uh, this part of the um, part of the piece is completed.